Hi, I'm Ben Coy, and for the next few minutes I'm going to walk through the steps necessary for creating a tour in Google Earth. We'll start first by defining a tour as a collection of locations organized by a common theme through which users can view, study, and connect with the world. Google Earth allows users to not only utilize an interactive virtual globe, but also interact with other users all over the world. It allows users to study geography, global conditions, weather patterns, even explore the Moon and Mars. By following along with this tutorial, I hope you'll see how Google Earth can prove to be an essential asset in student work across standards. Let's get started. In order to design a custom tour in Google Earth, I'm going to make use of the Places menu on the left-hand sidebar. In order to have the maximum amount of room to move, I'm going to minimize layers, and I'm going to grab Places and move it up as far as I can go, leaving the search box open. I'm going to select my Places, visit the Add menu, and select Folder. I'm prompted now to give it a title and a description. When I click OK, the folder is placed under My Places. I'm now ready to begin flying to locations that I will then add into my folder. Now that we've created our folder under My Places, we're ready to start searching for locations to add to our custom tour. What I'm going to do is use my subject of World War II to decide on a location and type it in in the Fly To box under my search menu. My first location is going to be Pearl Harbor. I'm going to click my magnifying glass to begin the search. And I'll notice that also under my search box, Google Earth has given me several locations that I can zoom to. I'm going to double click on the USS Arizona Memorial. Close out of the pop-up box and Google is going to allow me to zoom in even closer. I'm going to hit my plus sign a couple times on the navigation tools so that I can see our 3D model of the Arizona Memorial and use my navigation tools some more to get a better picture. I'm ready to add my place marker, so the very first thing that I want to do is select my folder under Places. This will ensure that the location gets saved underneath of this folder. I'm going to come up here to the push pin, click it one time, and I'd like to drag my pin to where I would like it to be located. I'm going to give myself a title. and paste in a description that, ha that I had previously written. You'll notice the website address in here. When we click OK and come back to view our tour at a later time, the website links will be active, allowing us to view the web pages as we click on them. I'll select OK, and if I notice under my places, I have my folder, and inside of that folder, I now have my first location of Pearl Harbor. I'm ready to add my second location, and I'm going to type in Normandy, France, and I've also typed in D-Day, Omaha Beach. Once again, this will help Google Earth find a little bit better where I would like to go to. I click on my magnifier or hit enter, and it's going to take me close to Normandy Beach. I'm going to click on the Normandy American Cemetery to zoom down in a little bit further, close out of my box, and I'll be able to view the memorial and the cemetery. Now again, just like we did with Pearl Harbor, I'm going to select the location for my place marker, and I'd like to zoom in very close to the beach area here, and turn myself completely around, looking as though I were approaching the beach from the water. I'm going to back up slightly out into the water, so I can recreate that impression. Once I have my image exactly the way that I want it. I'm ready to select my folder again, add my place marker, and give it a title. I've clicked OK, and again with my view the way that I want it, I now have two locations. If I double click on Pearl Harbor, you'll notice that Google Earth will fly me back over. and land exactly the way that I placed my pin. One more time, I'll double click on Omaha Beach in Normandy.
flying back to France, getting the view straight from the water. And since we have our terrain turned on in our layers, we'll be able to see the lay of the land. We can click on links to interact with those. And we're ready to add more locations into our folder. I've added a few more locations into my World War II events folder and I'm ready to save my project. I'm going to make sure that I select my folder once more just like I selected it when I added a place mark. I'm going to click on the file menu, select save and save place as. By default the file name will be the same as your folder and when you save Google Earth will either save it or prompt you to uh, save over what you have previously saved as it will do for me right now. I'm going to click yes that I want to replace it because I've made some changes since I've previously saved. At this point we have completed our tour. From here you can take the file that Google Earth has saved, save it to a flash drive or send it in an email to somebody else who can then open up that file on another computer running Google Earth. To demonstrate what that looks like I'm going to simply delete my World War II events tour out of my places folder. Now we're going to reopen the file as we would on another computer running Google Earth. I'm going to go to my file menu again, select open, find the file that I've saved, and simply click open. Google Earth will open up this file called yourtitle.kmz in the temporary places folder. When you close Google Earth, it will prompt you to either save it to my places or delete the temporary files. If you would like to do this manually, you can simply drag your folder into My Places. At this point, even if I s shut down the program and restart it, Google Earth will save whatever is in My Places. I can use the, check, uh, the plus sign to expand and contract the folder, and I can right click and delete the contents of my temporary places. Doing that will only delete what's inside of Google Earth, it will not delete your file. At this point, I can view my tour by simply clicking on the locations. When I click on them, my description pops up. My web link becomes active. If I clicked on it, it would take me to Internet Explorer or whatever is your default web browser so that you can view that web page. Any tour location that you click on, Google Earth will fly you to that area and it will fly it to exactly the view that you had originally intended. I hope you enjoyed viewing this tour, and I hope that you enjoy putting your own tour together in Google Earth. Have fun!